Abend. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Ekene Ndulwe. Legislators are now back for plenary following resumption from their two-month annual recess. Although deliberations for now are at a temporary venue owing to renovations of the hallowed chambers. And first order of business was President Muhammad Buhari's transmission of the 2023-2025 Medium Term Expenditure Framework and Fiscal Strategy Paper to the Senate for approval. President Buhari in the letter implored the legislators to give expeditious consideration to the MTEF and FSP to give way for the presentation and consideration of the 2023 Appropriations Bill so as to ensure the sustenance of the January to December budget cycle. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, welcomed his colleagues and reminded them of the need for more commitment to national issues, especially security challenges. Two months after their annual recess, senators are back for legislative business, not in the hallowed chamber this time, but in one of the conference rooms, 022 to be precise. The Senate reconvened into a closed-door session, which lasted two hours. Thereafter, President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, read executive communications from President Muhammad Buhari and I have directed the Honourable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning to take a number of measures designed to improve the fiscal condition of the federal government over the medium term. The President also sought the approval for the establishment of promissory notes program for the issuance of 375.4 billion naira to settle outstanding claims for export expansion grants between 2007 and 2020 to exporters. 18.6 billion to Yobe states for the construction of federal government roads. He requested the confirmation of Mohamed Sabo Lamido as Executive Commissioner, Finance and Accounts in the Board of the Upstream Regulatory Commission. Our focus must remain on ensuring that in ensuring a skewed and safe country and an economy that works for all citizens. Senate condemned the attack on the Senator representing Anambra South, Ifani Oba and called for a thorough investigation on the incident. This followed a motion by Senator Uche Ekunife. Chief Whip of the Senate, Oji Uzo Kalo, briefed Senate correspondents where he urged Nigerians to desist from viewing Nigeria's presidency from a regional point of view. It's not a regional issue. I have no problem with an Igbo man being president, but we have to do it with other Nigerians. If you don't do it with other Nigerians, it's not going to work, no matter how popular you are. The senator noted that during the recess, he presented the report of his midterm stewardship to his constituents and described it as an obligation for legislators. On day two of plenary, the Senate confirmed the appointment of Justice Olukayode Ariwala as the Chief Justice of Nigeria, following his appearance before the lawmakers. The legislators also passed for second reading the bill seeking to increase the number of judges of the Federal High Court from 100 to 172. Justice Olukayo Dariwala ushered into the Senate plenary by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on National Assembly Matters, Senator Babajide Omowarari. A parliamentary session for the Acting Chief Justice to provide justification for his appointment. And then questions and answers followed. Senators demanded to know his plans for reforms in the Nigerian judiciary. 
how he intends to address major challenges such as improving welfare of judicial workers, delay in justice delivery, improve transparency and compliance to rules in judicial appointments. Justice Ariwola explained that he is working to ensure that the Nigerian judicial system is computerized so as to ensure timely delivery of justice. My Lord, how will you ensure that the judiciary under your leadership is better equipped to perform this role. My Lord, I'm happy that you have identified as your core vision issues of reform in our administration of justice, particularly the issues of our rules and procedure of practice. There are really growing concerns about appointment of judicial officers in this country. We witness unnecessary delay in the administration of justice in our country. Lawyers may soon address the court from the comfort of their chambers once they are properly briefed. What has been our problem is fun. There's need to improve on the way we file processes, the way we, I mean, we still do a lot of writing. He made explanations on the issue of the alleged petition written against the immediate past Chief Justice of Nigeria. Indeed, we heard by way of a joint correspondence, I hate to use the word petition, but a joint correspondence that was uh, endorsed by pretty much every member of the court. It was not a petition. The justices were not protesting. You know, no, it was not a protest. We couldn't have carried placards. You know, uh, we just uh, thought to put uh, our complaint on paper for our brother, the Chief Justice. That was all. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Olukayo De Arola for appointment as the Chief Justice of Nigeria? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The aye said it. Senate also confirmed the reappointment of four persons as non-executive directors of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Senator Ibrahim Shekarao, representing Kano Central Senatorial District, announced to the Senate his defection from the NNPP to the PDP. APC is now 64, PDP 38, NNPP 3, ABGA 1, YPP 2 and Labour Party 1. The Senate in the week expressed dismay at the rate of increments of pay TV tariffs in Nigeria and called for pay-per-view plans. And to that effect, it invited service providers for discussions on how best to achieve this. This exercise or a major price increase in almost every two years needs to be properly checked and addressed. Not just to avoid possible cases of exploitation, but to be in tandem with international best practices. The rate of startups is moderate and affordable. The feeling of most Nigerians when they make this representation to me, DSTV, multi choice, certainly ripping Nigerians. I'm mindful that the operating environment is very challenging right now. There's been references to uh, diesel. A lot of our input costs are also often denominated in foreign currency. We came up with faith at day. Since 2017, on StarTime's platform, the customer can pay at day. There's no particular place that the Commission was given the power of fixing price. An amendment of the NBC laws to capture and reflect the realities of the present day developments in the ICT sector. And outside of plenary, the Senate has queried the financial statements 
of the National Board for Arabic and Islamic Studies over its violation of the extant laws of the financial regulation. This was when the board appeared before the Senate on the 2023-2025 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. The Senate Committee on Finance is taking input from agencies of government on the medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. During its interaction with the National Board for Arabic and Islamic Studies, the committee observed some financial bridges by the board and resolved to investigate the infractions. We are able to generate to August this year 410 million. You generated about 410 million. Out of this said amount, only 30 something million comes back to the federal government. From these analyses, you are given. I think we should investigate you. Other agencies that appeared before the committee are the Nigerian Communications Commission and Nigerian Correctional Service. 2023 is 113 billion naira. So when you add that um, accrual, you know, from the spectrum piece, that will raise it significantly to over 300 billion naira in 2023. In any way that you know that you can continue to improve the revenue of not only your agency but of the federal government by extension, you have to continue to do that. We have realized 70 million. 70 million. 70 million and 81,275 naira a two as at to date. I want to thank you for uh, what you are doing. You need encouragement. More agencies have been scheduled for the interactive session at a later date. Things are well and truly heating up on the political scene as political campaigns commence in a few days' time. Let's now get some perspective on how confident Nigerians can be that issue-based campaigns will feature prominently in the coming months. So again, uh, distinguished uh, political party campaigning will soon commence. Uh, what are you hoping or expecting to see from party candidates? Are we going to be seeing in uh, more of uh, what we've seen in past elections, uh, fanfare and uh, let's say mm. hate speech and that kind of thing, or do you expect to see more on of issue-based campaigning this time around? Well, unfortunately, there's nothing on the ground that makes me think uh, it will be different from what we're used to, the kind of campaigning that we've been used to. Uh, nothing there to suggest that it will be different now. Uh, people look you know, the typical politician, and by the way, it's not just restricted to Nigeria. I've watched election camp, uh, 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 you know, American uh, politicking for quite some time now, and uh, you discover that uh, it's about the same. Of course, it's more of issue based, than, but if there are any other issues like you are, you, you are quote womanizing or your child or, you know, did this or didn't do that, it, it becomes an issue, you know. Uh, so, uh, to, to, to be fair to us here, yeah, it's something that happens everywhere where you have politicians trying to get to power they will latch on to any inadequacy on the part of his opponent to try to you know uh, throw debt into the campaign of uh, the, the opponent into so like i said uh, i have not seen anything that uh, will make me think that it's going to be different this time uh, i hope it is i hope it is uh, and the media have a responsibility to try to bring us back to focus, to bring us back uh, to, to Ray, uh, so that uh, we don't go to the gutter just because of trying to win election. Uh, uh, like you said, very soon the whistle will be blown and uh, every, every weapon available to a politician will be used, I assure you, <laughs> in, order to, <laughs> in order to win election. Uh, uh, maybe one day uh, we'll do less of that and more of issue based, but for now, uh, adapt very unless the journalists keep bringing us back by focusing on the issues that matter. Unfortunately, we will have to rely on on, on, on the media 
to continue to remind us that no, those are not the issues that affect Nigerians. Those are, of course, issues that affect Nigerians to people who make uh, promises just like they have been making promises in the past, and um, uh, but sometimes not as deeply as one would wish uh, the, the promises are, are couched. Uh, you know, just the usual stuff we'll build hospitals, we'll do this, we'll do this, no, not fundamental things. Uh, so the journalists. In most cases, they set the agenda when it comes to such issues, and uh, uh, it's up. To, the boy is back in, in your court to try to remind us when we are going off mark. All right. Um, mm. Given what you've uh, and Nigerians have uh, experienced over the last, let's say, four or five years, what for you are the main issues that politi politicians should address if they are going to? Uh, Assuming we're going to get issue-based campaigning, what are these issues for you that are important that would uh, give the electorate confidence in voting so 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 candidate into power? Yeah, when well, I, I when I attended the public hearing for the constitutional amendment, uh, you know, the discussions that took place, the contributions from Nigerians across board, you know, distilled some of the issues that uh, bothered them, and I think. Uh, a lot of Nigerians uh, seem to think that the structures that we have now are not the best, will not produce much, uh, you know, in, in our march to development. Uh, suggestions were made, and I think in, any politician that comes, especially at, at the highest level, at the national, federal level, uh, should, you know, think deeply about how that can be addressed. Uh, let, let's try it and see too. Maybe it will be more of the same, or maybe there will be a different thing. If we restructure uh, several of the things that will happen here, we, we claim to be a federation, uh, you know, but uh, in reality, we are, we are operating a unitary system of government. Everybody ha runs to Abuja to come and get what they can take back home. Uh, that's not how a federation is run. Uh, in America, every state seems to be a nation within a nation. You have their Supreme Court, they have their Senate, they have their... So, it's only a few things that are done at the federal level, okay? So, those are some of the issues that came up during the constitutional uh, amendment public hearing that uh, took place. And not just in the, in the just uh, point where I attended, from what I, I followed in the media, virtually across the nation, those were, the, some, were some of the things, autonomy of the... Of, of the local governments, uh, autonomy of uh, the state assemblies. I mean, you can't have state assembly that is supposed to check the, the, the executive arm of government, literally begging for what is theirs. I mean, it means that um, uh, they, they can't do their, their job the way they, it should be done because they will always be looking over their shoulder uh, so they don't offend the executive, the chief executive. Uh, there are a lot of other issues uh, that are there, uh, but these are in the more concrete terms. Those are the issues that should be addressed rather than saying, I'll build bridges, I'll do this. That one, anybody, any Tom, Dick, and Harry can just say it. At the end of the day, they, they don't get to happen. But if you, if you get the structures right, uh, you'd have taken us far. You see, as a legislator, you'd be surprised sometimes I'll go home and the local government chairman will be asking me, hey, please, can I have boho? Uh, let me before I leave. Let me at least have a boho in my village. It should be the other way around. Not uh, the, the chairman is the chief executive for crying out loud. He should be the one providing those kind of infrastructure, not asking a legislator to come and provide it. That means the, the structure is not good, and this is where the bulk of Nigerians live. Yeah. The, yeah. So uh, if you do that, the, this rural urban migration will even be reduced. People will see no need of rushing to Abuja or rushing to other urban cities to come and uh, you know, make a living for themselves. All right, as far as the uh, Constitution Amendment process is concerned, where exactly are we at at this point in time? We'll have to get back for me to know, but as, uh, the last time I knew, they were thrown back to the states okay. for, their, for their input. You know, the, the Constitution Amendment is largely initiated from the federal, but it goes to the states too. Uh, the states will have to, once anything doesn't get the required number of votes at the state level, that is, 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 is dead. It's the same way both chambers will have to agree on any item before uh, you know, it, 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 it survives. If the states 
don't contribute enough votes, uh, that will be the end of uh, any of the issues. So that is at the level, the last time I knew that is at the level, but because I'm not a member of the, of, uh, but even members, I think they'll have to rely on you know, when we get back and the, 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 the views of the states are collected and taken back before we know exactly uh, what is, but that is the state we were in uh, the last time I knew. All right, uh, mm -hmm. lastly, distinguished, uh, obviously the political season is uh, heightening the excitement and tension and all the rest of it uh, as the legislators resume for the final lap of the ninth National Assembly. How is focus going to be uh, uh, maintained given that uh, a lot of the legislators yeah. will not be returning? Yeah, I, I expect that those who are, not, who, are, who are not going to be returning should focus on the work in, in the chambers. I will understand a lot of of the members will not be on the floor because of campaigning, which again is not uh, is not uh, what happens. I mean, it's not something that is peculiar to to, to Nigeria. And so, but for those of us who are not returning, uh, I think we we'll, we'll focus on the job uh, ahead. And uh, there are a lot of pending issues that I expect should be concluded before we leave. Uh, some of us have sponsored bills that are, are, are yet going through the process and uh, we expect to see it uh, to its logical conclusion before the end of uh, the, ninth, the ninth assembly. So uh, all of those issues and of course there are some issues that will come up uh, that, like security. Uh, those are not issues you plan for but uh, uh, in fact indeed every week that we see it, a, a, a issue of insecurity here or there comes up on, on the floor and we have to address them. So those are some of the issues. We just spoke about the constitutional amendment. It has not yet been concluded. So as, as long as it's not concluded, the National Assembly can be said to have amended the constitution in the Ninth Assembly. So it's, it's an issue I'm sure will be seen to its logical conclusion before the end of this uh, you know, legislative session. All right, so just one more point. Um, mm. Some have uh, observed that uh, this ninth National Assembly, every, ninth, every uh, assembly has its identity. Mm. Um, some people have said that uh, the next assembly, the 10th assembly, uh, has a job to do in terms of redeeming the image of the uh, legislative arm of government in terms of its independence and its uh, sanctity as an authority in the government's process. What would be your response given that many have labelled the United National Assembly as the robust Okay, I get it. But I didn't hear commendations in the Eighth Assembly when they took a very combative relationship with the executive arm of government. I didn't hear Nigerians, can, oh, you are doing the right thing, that's how it's supposed to be done. I didn't hear that. Now this one decided that, okay, let's cooperate with it. And uh, then it's called, the, uh, it's like a uh, the National Assembly will be the loser in the thing, you see? The present... What, like it or hate it, the present stance of the National Assembly has produced its own result, positive result. Okay, in the last assembly, more than 300 Bs were passed. Okay, less than 50 were signed into law by the president, by the same president. Now almost every B that goes there is signed into law. Is that not something positive to point to as a result of the relationship that the present uh, leadership of the National Assembly, or indeed the present, the Ninth Assembly has adopted? So it, it has its own uses, okay? Uh, the moment the National Assembly, or at least there was mention of impeachment because of a lot of things, untoward things that uh, have happened, Nigerians rose up, oh, that, that shouldn't be your focus. So sometimes I don't really understand how. The, so, some of these issues should be approached, but uh, we are servants of the people, so we are amenable to criticisms and uh, we we'll take corrections from there. But at the end of the day, it is what we have achieved as a result of this approach uh, that should count against us or for us, not uh, the, the, the you say many roads <laughs> lead to Rome. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if you are going to Rome, it doesn't matter the road that you take. <laughs> Once you get there, at the end of it. All right. Mm -hmm. Once again, many thanks for your. It's a, it's a pleasure.
Well, that concludes the program for this week. Join us again next week for more on Senate 109. Till then, I am Ekene Ndulwe. Bye for now. <laughs>